Hello buddy, Sanyer, engineer, MBA, and the investor. And in today's video, we are talking about NTLA Therapeutics, NTLA Therapeutics, talking about their NTLA 2002 program. This was a press release on the 31st of January. So I don't know if you guys know, we are in February. Man, time goes so fast, guys. Time goes so fast. Just yesterday, we were in December, and last week feels like we were last summer. So uh, things are accelerating really quick, guys. I think with age, and I think I speak for many people here, uh, once you enter in your 30s and maybe gets even worse in your 40s, time goes uh, so fast. Anyways, Intelia Therapeutics announces publication of positive interim phase one data for Intelia 2002 in patients with HA. E in the New England Journal of Medicine. Data reinforced the potential of NTLA 2002 to eliminate angiodemia attacks in people living with HAE after single dose. A single dose of NTLA 2002 led to a 95% mean reduction in monthly HAE attack rate out of 9 out of 10 patients with the remaining completely attack-free following the 16-week primary observation period through the latest follow-up report. Intelia 2002 was well-tolerated at all doses levels. Second, NEGJM, the New England Journal of Medicine, publication of initial clinical data for Intelli, uh in vivo CRISPR-based investigational therapies. Okay. So we look at uh, the reported data here shows a single dose led to 95% mean reduction in monthly attack rates across all 10 patients in the phase one portion. Nine out of 10 patients remain completely free out of the 16 week period. So that's four months. Further, all patients who discontinued So wait, wait, let's read this out. Further, all patients who have discontinued concomitant, I don't even know what this word even means, long-term HAE prophylactic treatment after NTLA, NTLA 2002 administration N equals six sample have reported no HAE attack since discontinuation. NTLA 2002 have been well tolerated at all doses level. The most frequent adverse events were reported mild. The data, previously shared in late breaking presentation in 2023. Okay. And we took a look at phase three, which is starting uh, this year in the second half of 2024, subject to regulatory feedback. Okay, so what are my thoughts? First of all, this is, I, I wanna remind viewers, this is 2002, There's, that's not even their leading program. If you take back at their leading program, Right? If we take a look at this uh, pipeline here. Their leading program is actually 2001, which is actually going through phase three as we speak, right? Or it should be going through phase three, if I'm correct. Uh, and 2002 is like, you know, creme of the creme. You know, it's, it's, it's not even their leading program. Literally, their leading program is until 2001. And that is partnered with Regeneron. Uh, and I like how they say lead here because they still lead that program. And NTLA 2002, though, is fully owned by NTLA. So there's a play here, right? Depends how you see it, right? I mean, although NTLA 2001 is the leading program for this company, it's still being shared with another big pharma company, which is good, right? Do you want that? Let's just look at the model from uh, Cash Javai. Uh, so look at that model and um, obviously look at now what they're trying to do here with Regeneron for NTLA 2001. Now, 2002, what's interesting is fully owned, which means they have several options, right? I don't see them ever going fully solo into this, even after FDA approval by 2026, 2027. Uh, I think that would be quite naive to think that. I think for a company like CRISPR Therapeutics, just like NTLA, the goal here is to become a platform where you can partner up with companies. Uh, and I think Regeneron is probably gonna come to the table and say, look, we're already in 2001. We already have this amazing program together. Let's just, you know, buy it in 2002. Let's do 50-50. Let's put up a billion dollars for you guys. Let's go, let's go at it. Maybe two billions at that point, who knows? Uh, I, I can see that happening or not. Maybe Pfizer comes into the play, Moderna, you know, Vertex. Maybe Vertex is like, you know what? We like CRISPR therapeutics, ex vivo programs. 
let's get a dip in in vivo and let's get it in vivo with another company, right? We know that Vert CRISPR Therapeutics is doing their own thing with in vivo, but a little bit too early. Their 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 talent is more focused on you know Cas Jevi, which again is a successful program. Don't get me wrong, uh, but why put all your eggs in one basket? If I was Vertex leadership, that's what I would have done. Um, but you know who knows? I'm definitely not leadership there. So there are a couple of plays here, but NTD 2002 getting amazing data, guys. 95% mean reduction in attacks monthly. That's crazy. I mean, you think about that. That's a single dose across all dosage levels so far for this program. NTLA is a company that is here to stay. NTLA, for me, I think they were sandbagging by saying 2026 FDA submissions. I think that's the date they were looking at, 2026, if I remember from their highlights we covered last month uh, for the year 2024. I would presume that this company can start submitting FDA documents by early 2025 and potentially get it approved in the year of 2025. Uh, especially with what just happened with Cash Java a couple of uh, weeks ago slash months. And uh, I think there's a play here. I think there's a play for this company to have both NT 2001 and 2002 approved within the same year-ish. So basically by the year 2025 end of it, or maybe even 2026, as they predict, uh, not just one, but two programs, I would say, could be approved by a single CRISPR company. Uh, again, I'm sort of you know forecasting here, but... There's something to be said here. The data is amazing. HAE is a rare disease that no one is tackling. There is no alternative. I remember there was someone saying, you know, this is the same program like Prime Medicine tackling 14 patients in the US. Guys, there's not just 14 patients, okay? I mean, uh, these, first of all, you can't make these statements, right? There's 500,000 patients with ATTR up to worldwide. You look at, uh, you know, HAE, there's 50,000 patients worldwide. You can't make these numbers up, right? These are st statistics. Like, look, they took this from a New England Journal of Medicine. These are just random. And these are old numbers, I would argue, because these are from 2021. Obviously, the population has grown. We all know that it's a genetic trait uh, as you, you know, have more babies or more children with the folks with that gene trait. You increase that population sample, unfortunately. Um, but for a business standpoint, 50,000 is still a lot. I don't think people understand this. Uh, you'd be lucky to even treat a thousand patients. Um, and even if you think about it, you're not editing the germline. So how many years does it take to cover all the worldwide? Now, obviously you can look at it that way because obviously from the 50,000 patients worldwide, there's obviously unfortunately gonna be a lot of those patients you cannot tackle. But even if you do a conservative effort here for NTA 2002 and you say, you know what? We, this company can only tackle 10,000 patients, right? So a 20% of those patients, or let's go even more conservative, 5,000 patients, right? So that's about five years of business, right? Five years of governments funding this program, buying these therapies up for millions and millions of dollars. And I guarantee you it's gonna be a lot more than two millions that cash job I uh, charge because that's gonna be in two-ish years. Things are gonna get more expensive, inflation, and of course, this is a rare disease. Uh, and, you know, governments are going to be like, look, no one's tackling these diseases. We're going to pay you up front. Let's just make it happen. Just cure our patients, you know. And I, I agree with that. I think as a taxpayer of Canada, for example, I would want Canadian government to fund a program like NTD 2001, 2002 at its maximum. You know, instead of having these patients go through, you know, alternatives that are not curing their disease, they're unfortunately spending a lot of money from our healthcare system, creating weight lines, crazy weight lines, creating bottlenecks. The total cost of ownership, as you know, some people in the business world would say, is actually less if you go with these CRISPR therapies. We talked about it for CASJAVI from CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex. Same thing applies here. So I really like what I'm seeing here, guys, from NTLA. I just wanted to make this video here about it. Just found it really fascinating. Uh, you know, it's just fascinating, the data. Uh, we're so, so into it, and it's, it's, it's a great, great day for, for all investors. Great year, great, great year as to say, you know, I think it's going to be an exciting year for 2024. Uh, look, you never know what can happen. It takes one bad set of data, one program to mess things up, one regulation to mess things up, but things have been successful so far. We have no reason to believe things will go uh, downwards from here on. Of course, stocks have not recovered. That's another topic, maybe for another day, but... We'll go with that, guys. 
as always subscribe if you're not like this video guys do like it it really does help the channel let's send the videos around the, the world viewers around the world rather look at our videos and support this mission of CRISPR that is the mission of this channel free information of CRISPR around the world thank you so much for watching